it's Jenny welcome to another process video for this um, layout today I have challenged myself to use a 12 by 12 um, paper pad that I bought from a shop here called Kmart and it's like a budget shop and so this um, particular pad is from Heidi Grace and it is a predominantly girly um, paper so it's really really thin paper very flimsy it's not your quality of a nice single 12 by 12 piece of paper but there were some really nice patterns in there so I wanted to um, make a layout because I this has been in my stash for a long time so I wanted to see what I could do with this paper so in the end I was happy with the layout and I've also pulled in a couple of butterflies from um, Studio Calico. So they were like cork butterflies. Actually, sorry, they were from American, American Crafts. And a little bow from Maggie Holmes. A wood veneer that says love from Prima. And some little um, hexagon sugar dots. So as you can see, I've just gone through the papers and I've picked the ones that I think will work best and I have matted that photo um, of my daughter Johanna this was taken a couple of years ago and I matted that on the nice green floral paper from that collection and I'm now building up my page um, trying to work out what I want to use from the papers so there was a little bit um, of, of a piece in there that brown piece there at the bottom that that was um, a piece that I cut out you saw me cut that out and I liked that because that was one of that looks like one of the new collections I think it could be a studio calico piece that has the file tab um, cutouts on that one single 12 by 12 so I liked the look of that and thought it added a little bit of difference to the page and I've cut out some word strips as well and they say express yourself as only you know how and be the change you wish to see in the world so I thought they were um, good for this layout too so I spared you watching me fussy cut all of the little elements so one of the pages had some little cutter parts on it so I spent some time fussy cutting those out and also fussy cutting some flowers from one of the floral pieces and just having a look now deciding what how I want to do it and so I'd like to use that blue background with the nice wood veneer in the middle but you know I always got it out even though it was a very cheap paper pad um, I still kept that little bit of wood veneer because it was so nice um, the wood floor for another time because I thought I'd like to use that again so this was just another one of those challenges for me to use up my stash and to show that you know scrapbooking does not have to be really expensive and that we can look in what we already have and not use too many added embellishments so now when you go looking for collections there a lot of the new collections have paper they have embellishments they have um, die cut packs they have rub-ons they have vellum packs and we can be tempted to buy every single line and feel that we can't scrapbook without them so this is uh, one of those layouts where you you take your supplies we go back to basics and we scrapbook what we have with a budget in mind and still make a beautiful page so I've cut all those elements and I'm going to use those as the layering pieces so these are like my die cuts that I would get in a die cut pack and seeing what pieces on the cards I might like to cut out as well so that was a little tiny butterfly and cutting apart the pieces so that I can layer them all up so I don't use them all but um, you know I cut them out anyway to see 
where they would go on a page and what I can do with them. So a lot of the collections now, well this actually, this collection was about two or three years old. So it's an older one, but a lot of them now come with those cut apart sheets and they come with little, a lot of elements on the page that can actually be um, cut to use as embellishments. So they are really cost effective and, and a great way to scrapbook because you can get away with um, making a lot of layouts from that one paper pad. And if you don't have the paper pad and you're wanting to do a budget friendly one as well, you know, buying those cut apart sheets always works really well. So that's one of the first things I look for in a collection and maybe just buy one or two other pieces. So I usually look for what I can cut out and use instead of having to buy the die cut packs. So we all like new things, but sometimes new things will hurt the budget and we've just got to work with what we've got to work with. So just what am I up to now? So I've just cut a few little strips of chevron paper and put them to the side of that beautiful red hexagon paper and I'm um, placing all the layers behind so I'm sticking them down so I've had a little bit of a play before you saw me do that where I've stuck bits and pieces and now I'm trying to remember where I had them or just putting them on it anyway and that little one where my hand is touching now had I love this photo because and I didn't necessarily want to write because but I wanted to keep the I love this photo so I'm just working out how I can best cover the because and you wouldn't necessarily know that it was even there so then it just simply reads I love this photo so as you know I love my layering and I love to um, add lots of texture with the layers of paper and it's just a fun way to use um, your little bits and pieces up and to also add lots of different shades of one color so there's lots of different pinks throughout this um, page and throughout the top cluster there above the photo so maybe not at this stage but there will be in the end so this layout took me a lot longer because I had to do a lot of fussy cutting so um, I think it took me about an hour and a half to complete which is pretty good in the old days it probably would have taken me a few days to complete so um, I am moving along a little bit quicker than usual so there I am just fussy cutting another little flower and those flowers were really pretty there were quite a few on there on the one sheet that were different sizes so I was able to cut them and layer them up and they're not all the same flower and they had a few little tags that, um, that little banner one that says happy days that was a little tag on there and underneath had the other little tag so they're always good to use as well because you can use them as a banner or use them for a title so at the moment I've got the beautiful sitting there to the right hand side and even though when I'm looking at it on film it looks like a very similar color to the background piece of paper um, when I was looking at it in real life um, it wasn't the right color blue so I didn't really like that sitting there and I end up changing it so it's funny watching the process videos and when I get to this point and do the narration um, it's quite funny looking at it and I see parts of the layout that I really love and wish I had have just left them as as they were but at the time if I'm you know being a bit hesitant or just not committing to something um, I'll swap and change and swap and change and sometimes come up with something different and it's not until watching back that I wish I had have left it as it was but that's just a part of the scrapbooking process too is uh, making a decision and coming to a conclusion and just committing and sticking things down so there you go I've made the swap there so I have 
taken that beautiful out and I have put hello beautiful and that was um, the tones that matched the red background paper as well so just sticking that down and putting it so you can still see the top of the file tab there and putting the flowers on so that you can still see the file tab I'm not taking them away and I'm just hanging it over the edge a little bit so that I can trim that down and have that um, straight as the side of the page is straight and now working on that little cluster as well building that up I think I get another flower and fussy cut that one out and what I'm trying to do there is there was a little bit of um, awkward space just between that pink um, square behind the photo and the bottom of the banner so I was trying to place the banner up high enough that it covered the awkward little space and that you wouldn't know that that was there and it looks quite good I like the fact that that's a little bit higher on the left hand side than it is on the um, right hand side as I like my things in the page not necessarily to match and um, yeah I like that look so here I'd go I had fiddled with those um, placements of the word titles back and forth back and forth back and forth not quite sure whether I wanted them on the bottom whether I wanted them on the top whether I was making the top too heavy whether I was making the bottom then look too blank so I've gone back and forth, back and forth a few times. So I haven't committed to stick that other um, word strip down. And I'm having a look at what I can find in this paper. And I found something that says there is... I'm trying to read it because I haven't got that layout in front of me. I can't see it. The little screen I'm looking at is much smaller than the one you're seeing. So... Um, Actually, I'll just grab that layout so I can have a look. Alright, so there is never a dull moment with you. So I really wanted to make that work and I couldn't get that to work on this one. So I've gone back and forth, back and forth, as you can see, and I couldn't... Um, I should have just committed. I li really like that there. I look at that and think that looks really good just leave that as is and call it done but no I'm not sure and so I'm going to cut a piece of chevron paper and maybe I'm thinking maybe if I add another little piece of paper under that brown strip that might make that word banner look better so I like the look of that so I stick that down and then I still fiddle with that title banner and don't put it on. But I do use it in the next layout that I make. So I didn't throw it out and I used it. And sometimes, like I said, if, we had, if I had have just committed, it looks fine. I'm looking at it now and quite liking um, the way it's sitting. So I should have just used it, but on the day I was being a bit indecisive and couldn't make up my mind, and so I just got rid of it. So you'll see that I actually do put it down, and that's where this double-sided sticky tape is really good. It is um, a permanent sticky tape, uh, or double-sided tape, and once things are stuck they're not going to move in the album they are stuck forever but you actually get you know some wriggle room of about 10 minutes before it actually really seals so um, it's perfect for me because I often put things down and then decide that I don't want them on there or I want them in a different place and this one you can just take up and it actually doesn't rip any of the paper off and it's quite forgiving so that's an awesome awesome sticky tape and I think it's from Express Express it so um, they just sell that in the roll here for I think about $3.50 or something and it's got oodles on the, the roll so it lasts a really long time so at the moment still fiddling with some of those little bits and pieces 
trying to work out where I want to put those um, die the love hearts that I fussy cut out and trying to put them um, touching the photo mat page but also not being hidden by the flower so I put three little love hearts on each side and at the top and so here's where I've decided that I need to build the cluster up the top a little bit and add a flower up there as well so I fiddle for a while trying to work out where I want the flower to go but I just tuck it under the little um, photo there and I'm just moving the little butterflies around and trying to see whether I want a big butterfly up the top or at the side and I have put a big butterfly at the right hand side and two smaller ones at the top and on the left so it must be nearly time I'm looking thinking okay I've got everything there okay I haven't glued down that the love so that lo wooden love was from Prima that was one I've had in my stash for a long time so just pulling out the glossy accents to stick the little bow down which continued to slip around the page and wouldn't sit still but I finally got it to stay and that was a really nice little addition the bow tie because it matched the little brown strip that I had on the bottom as well so the whole collection looks really nice and just having a look where I can add something else so I'm going to add um, the date to that um, little piece a little bit later on so this collection the finished um, thing all together the finished page all together reminded me of Maggie Holmes a Maggie Holmes collection I don't know whether you can see that but I looked at that if I didn't know where this paper was from I would actually have guessed that it was a Maggie Holmes collection so that was really nice to um, discover that paper pad in my stash and to make because Maggie Holmes is one of my favorites so to make a layout that reminded me of her of her collections was good so here's my black ink which means I am just about finished so I will show you some uh, close-ups and a still a couple of photos and that's it so thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time bye